Hello, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I know I had made a video like a week or so ago stating how I would make a separate channel for dialysis patients as well as Christian dialysis technicians, but honestly guys, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have that I don't have a lot of time on my hands nowadays, so I said let me just um lump the all the videos together. So Please don't be angry at me, all right? When I get some time, then I will do my due diligence to separate all of the videos and into different channels. But right now, it's going to stay on this channel, Dialysis Technicians Worldwide. Now, this video is for dialysis patients. And, um, well, I like to say individuals on dialysis. And I will be talking about today reasons, what, what are some of the reasons why you are waiting a long time to get on the machine? You know, a lot of patients I know in the clinics that I worked in get so angry, especially first shift, second shift, and third shift, all the shifts. Let me just say all the shifts. People get so angry when they're sitting outside for a very long time and they're waiting for a chair. Some units have scheduled times. Some units are not really good with scheduled times. But um, honestly, I'm just going to tell you from my experience, I have not really seen scheduled times to work because anything can happen. Okay, anything can go wrong. So bottom line is I'm going to go over these few issues behind the weight. All right, and so hopefully that will um, enlighten you as to what could possibly be going on um, behind the scenes while you are waiting. I do not want you to get frustrated sitting there like, oh my goodness, I need to be on this machine. I know many patients get very angry, hostile sometimes. Patients are banging on the door, screaming, shouting, getting their blood pressure way up high because they want to get on the machine or they have been waiting a very long time. And the staff hasn't really informed them as to what is going on so I'm gonna tell you number one your clinic could be experiencing water room issues I'm gonna start with I'm sorry I'm gonna start with first shift patients okay if you're coming in the clinic around five o'clock or earlier um, this is for you your first shift patient so water room issues a host of things can go wrong in the water room. All right. The chlorine, chloramines test could come back looking a certain way. And if the chlorine, chloramine test comes back um, with the reading that is not up to par, we cannot, we cannot put any patient on the machine. Okay, I'm going to make another video about that because I want to go more into depth about the chlorine, chloramines test. Number two, bicarb and or acid problems, RO problems, slash other issues. Okay, um, I have seen it so many times where a batch of bicarb was made and it wasn't made right. And so the reading wasn't right. And so that bicarb had to be drained out and a fresh batch had to be made. Or either I saw a situation where the bicarb machine wasn't working right. It wasn't transferring the bicarb. And when it wasn't transferring the bicarb, that resulted in the unit using other means to get that bicarb on the floor. We had to get small buckets small buckets that look like small gasoline um gasoline buckets you know and we had to but they were specifically made for bicarb all right and we had to put that bicarb in each of the buckets and put each bucket on a machine all right and so that that took up a lot of time and we could not allow any patients to come into the unit until everything was set regarding that bicarb Acid problems. I haven't seen a lot of acid problems, but if that acid pump is not distributing the acid on the floor, then the readings on the machine 
when it comes time to test the machines, the readings, the reading will be off and, and we will have a problem. One time I remember it took a long time for us to find out what the issue was and it was an acid pump problem. Third, inspection from corporate very early in the morning. If corporate comes into the unit very early, into the facility, sorry, into the facility very early, that would take up some time because we had to move kind of, we had to make sure we're doing things right. We got to move a little bit more slow and we had to, corporate will ask us, you know, well, how do you test this? What are you doing about that? And da 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 and da 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 So that will make, make the whole process of opening the door for you guys much slower because we got to slow down and we got to answer corporate's questions and this happened to me so many times I'm the opener I come in to open I come in to do my thing and all of a sudden I get a surprise visit and the guy is asking me all kinds of questions and I had to stop and answer them I had to do what he wants me to do because he also has the power to fire me or to write me up all right, moving on. Number two, you there could be some machine issues going on. All right, maybe there could be some leaking from the machines, multiple machines that have leaked overnight. I have had this happen so many times. I come early in the morning to set up my machine or to open and my machine has so much water around that I'm going to have to either change that machine out or either I'm going to have to mop it up and see if I could diagnose the problem. All right, so that slows down things a lot, especially if multiple machines leak in that same pod or section. That means that's a mini flood, and it's going to take a long time to kind of clean that up, especially if the housekeeper isn't there at that time. Many units have certain policies regarding housekeepers coming and, and what their duties are, whatever, but I know that we had a housekeeper that would come a little later, maybe around 8 o'clock to, you know, do the cleaning. But we as techs were responsible for any mopping concerning leaking machines. Number two, failed tests. Maybe there are multiple machines that are failing the test because I hate to say they wasn't moved the night before. Maybe somebody else saw an issue with those machines and did not move them. So when the new people are coming in in the morning, they run into these same machines that are not working properly and they and the machines are failing the test and so that takes time to move those machines or diagnose those machines and see how those machines can pass the test if the if the machines will not pass the test they have to be removed and that is going to take some time especially if it's multiple machines and then it's the fact as is there any more machines in the back that can be traded for the broken machines. I have been in situations where there's two machines that are not working on the floor, but there's only one working in the back. So that could be an issue. Number three, lack of essential supplies. All right. Hi. I have been in many situations where the wh whoever was making the orders forgot to make a certain order for saline lives lines or a particular dialyzer and when we ran out we would have to go to another unit ask another unit to borrow um, the supplies yada 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 it took up some time because we did not have the essential supplies to string up the machines to allow the machine to test and to put the patient on all right but that was seldom it wasn't all the time but I just noticed that as something that um, something that held up my patients from coming in to the unit and getting on the machine moving on staff number three staff Maybe the opener 
got very sick or it could be a schedule confusion okay um, sometimes I got very sick and I couldn't open a unit and so if you know usually it's two openers many years I did it by myself but usually it's supposed to be two openers and if one opener who comes kind of early early gets sick then that leaves the second opener who comes slightly later to do all of the work and that can that can make the that can affect the shifts okay that can affect the times schedule confusion maybe there was a slight confusion on who's supposed to open and who's not supposed to open you know who's supposed to come in regular and so because of that schedule confusion you know maybe nobody really opens the unit early that day that has I have been in that situation that has happened number two adjusting to new time given by management under each man I was under a lot of different managers and each manager had their own way of wanting the facility open one manager said come in at 540 the opener comes in at five o'clock the other manager said the opener comes in at 430 the rest of the people come in at five o'clock so it was it was different time frames and depending on how the manager adjusts the time frame it can affect the patients number two new equipment set up in addition to machines or new procedures all right so corporate may say okay we want to add this new piece of equipment alongside of the machine and you know we we want this used on our on our patients so I remember with the chair side I remember with the chair side um, even though my machines were it takes some time it may take one or two weeks if it's gonna be an issue like this with new machines set up um, it may take a, a week or two for the staff to get used to setting up maybe the crit line machine or maybe there's a, a, a what is it a, um, a new chair side machine that must be set up as well but with the chair side it's a learn it's electronic chart sorry it's an electronic chart so what should be happening is the machine should be set up first and then the chair side comes later but like I said to each his own some people like to fool with the chair side first and then string up their machine so to each his own number four on that three short of staff that is a big one that is the most popular reason why you could be waiting a long time outside sure the staff first shift it could be a patient or it could be not a patient sorry guys it could be a technician or it could be nurses I have seen where <clears throat> if I believe three nurses are needed to open the unit the units that I'm familiar with two to three two to three if only one nurse is there the doors cannot be open because there's only a certain amount of patients you know like the nurses have to cover a certain amount of patients and they cannot from what I know the nurses can one nurse cannot be responsible for 26 patients or 24 or 20 because I worked in units with 20 24 26 and so if the other nurse doesn't show we're gonna have to keep those doors closed until we can get a nurse to come in either the manager the clinical manager will have to come in you know to to help open the unit because one nurse cannot open that door by his or herself 
even with this even with a full staff of techs <laughs> even if every tech came in and 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 there's only one nurse the door still can't be open all right because there by by whatever state law there's a certain ratio that each nurse is supposed to be given per patient and from what i know is from the many times I have seen this happen, either the nurse manager comes and works with that nurse so that the door can be open. If no nurse come and there's still only one left, then the clinical manager may say, okay, you can only put on four patients at a time until I can get a replacement or coverage for you that day or until I can come in. All right, if you're a second and third shift patient, the patient before you could have arrived in the morning late for treatment, number one, patients. The patient before you could arrive in the morning kind of late for treatment, and that's why, that's why you're kind of getting on the machine late. But don't get upset. <laughs> Because things happen, guys, please. Don't get upset at that patient if you find out that. Um, if it's a constant issue, then see if you can get your chair moved or talk to the clinical manager on what you can do, especially if you have a job. There could be many reasons also why the patient before you arrived late. It could be their transportation. Maybe transportation has a habit of picking them up late and not doing a good job. So, you know, it, it may not necessarily be the patient just dragging in, the other person, sorry, the other person just dragging in late. It could be their transportation not doing what they're supposed to do, you know, or some other reasons um, that make it difficult. Now, number two, complications post-treatment with a, with a patient from the previous shift. That is, the previous patient could have experienced post-treatment complications. They might have passed out. Maybe their pressure is dropping very dangerously low. Or some patients I have seen experience seizures. And then the big one, bleeding profusely. These kind of issues require that an individual stay seated, stay in that pod or in that section and receive, receive emergency care until they are better, until... You know, the nurse may say, you know what, okay, move that patient to the side, put another chair there, and bring in the next patient. But if a patient from the first shift is experiencing, like I said, any of these complications, then they are going to have to sit in that chair and they're going to have to be treated until they are well. And this could be a reason why you're sitting outside waiting a long time for the machine. Maybe you came at 12.30. I'm sorry, maybe you came at, yeah, 12, 12.30. And you're waiting till 1.30. And you're like, what is going on? I've been waiting out here for a long time. Well, that could be what has happened. All right, we're going to move on to machine issues again but this is for second and third shift patient machine issues number one on that two testing could have failed for some reason on that machine i have been in a situation where i had the machine working good for first shift when it came time for second and third shift the machine starts acting up it starts leaking, it starts failing the test, so then I had to take my time and I had to remove 
all of the the setup and the selling bag and I have to either call the equipment tech well that's only if the if the equipment tech isn't there and I did everything I'm supposed to do or either the equipment tech is there then the equipment tech may tell me okay just move that machine or or he'll move it he'll move the machine and that takes more time all right um number two bicarb acid issue uh, issues with that machine that could still fall under what I'm talking about maybe the machine just stopped sucking up the bicarbon acid and it's now giving out false readings and number three machine is defective it just you know just fails everything it's spewing out water it's just defective so it just takes time to move that machine so that could be a reason why you are waiting a long time you're like get me on that machine like I said some patients are banging on the door screaming cursing get me on the damn machine that's what they say that's what many people say you know sorry to say that word but that's exactly what I've been hearing get me on this machine right now and I'm telling you these things so that you don't get upset or angry you can ponder on these things and talk to your tech about it and ask your tech what is going on or ask whoever you know is treating you what is really going on all right because issues from the first shift affect second the previous shift so my thing is um It would be wise to just ask your tech what's going on. Ask the nurse what is going on. If it's once in a while you get on the machine late, that shouldn't honestly be a problem. But if it's all the time, every time it's time for your treatment, you're getting on the machine late, then you need to ask some questions and get some answers. My patients ask me all the time, why am I on the machine late? I find that communication is a very crucial, important thing within the unit. I tell them why. Well, my machine isn't working properly today, and I had to move it. Or first shift, we had an issue with the water room, and we couldn't open the door on time for the people on the first shift, so that's why you're getting on kind of late. Well, I don't want to hear that. Y'all always having an issue in here. La, 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 la. I just I, honestly, that's how it is in dialysis units. There is always something going on. Always. I'm not trying to make excuses, but I know from working as a DA, dialysis assistant, and then working as a technician and opening a unit, it's always a leak with the machine, always a flood. And then in the water room, it's always something. So, I mean, if any patients, well, if I don't mean to say patients all the time, I usually like to say individuals on dialysis. I like to say that. I'm sorry if I'm always saying patients all the time. I meant individuals. You as an individual on dialysis deserve to be informed. All right? So I... I hate to see and I hate to hear of patients getting so angry, banging on the door, cursing, shouting, because they haven't gotten on the machine on time. It will be good to calm down and get the answers that you need if this continues to happen. What you should do is you should talk to your manager about maybe switching a chair depending on the reason. If the reason is because the first shift patient is coming in late all the time, you have to go to work, then that's something to take it up with the clinical manager. If you're a first shift patient and the door is never opening on time, then you need to talk to the manager or talk to your tech and ask the reasons what is going on because if you have to go to work after first shift, that is going to affect you. So instead of getting very angry, and 
your your pressure going all sideways because I know when some patients are when some individuals are so angry when we try to put them on the machine once the door opens we can't because the pressure is in the the 200s now and we're gonna have to wait more time for that pressure to get in normal range in order to put you know continue with the treatment process so I just want to you know give you those reasons and encourage you if you also have a topic that you want me to talk about or elaborate on, just um, just go to my blog, Dialysis Technicians Worldwide. Blogspot. Com, and send me a message under the contact tab, or you could just post your question below this video, and um, I will see it and I will make a video concerning it. I also have a few more videos coming up but not today and over the next few weeks concerning individuals on dialysis and some of the issues such as temperature in the unit, uh, issues with staff, and a host of other topics. Again, my blog is Dialysis Technicians Worldwide .blogspot .com. The only two books that are available is The Wisdom Secret Diary of a Dialysis Technician and Expert Tips on Becoming a Dialysis Technician. Um, the other book that you see has not came out yet, but be patient, all right? I will give you updates through my blog. You have a blessed day.